Life as we know it would not exist without protein. Proteins are ubiquitous in living organisms. That is, they're found everywhere. In bones, blood, flesh, vitamins and enzymes, pigments that color the skin, hair, eyes, chromosomes that carry our genetic heritage. All these contain substantial quantities or are made entirely of protein. Proteins are marvelously varied. Different species have different proteins. And even individuals within a species each have slightly different proteins performing the same function. Different tail proteins and different mood proteins. Only identical twins have identical proteins. A protein is usually a compact structure with both cavities and protrusions on its surface. These surface irregularities act as binding sites for other proteins. They are, in effect, engineering features that enable protein to carry out its biological function. A widely known example of such a function is the action of antibodies in the human immune response system. A smallpox vaccination, for instance, introduces a foreign substance into the body. The body, in reaction, manufactures protein antibodies whose surface features complement the surface features of the foreign substance. When they bind to the foreign protein, they prevent it from functioning. They are also capable of binding to a more dangerous protein with a very similar shape. Other examples of proteins that perform specific functions in the human body are Enzymes such as amylase, which help break down starch in the mouth. Hormones like insulin that help balance the levels of sugar in the blood and in the cells. Contractile proteins such as actin and myosin, which work together to contract the muscles. Transport proteins such as hemoglobin, which is the carrier of oxygen in the blood. And structural and protective proteins like keratin, found in the skin and hair. When we eat other living things, we are eating protein. Unfortunately, the protein we eat can't be used directly to supply our particular protein requirements. We need to manufacture our own. The site of protein manufacture, or protein synthesis, as it is called, is the individual cell. The cell may be an entity on its own, or a member of a cell group forming a particular tissue in a multicellular organism. Whether with others or alone, the cell manufactures the protein required for its survival as a unit and the protein necessary to carry out its function within the organism as a whole. But what is a protein? A protein is a complex organic compound. It is a chain called a polypeptide, whose links or components are amino acids. Poly is the prefix meaning many. Peptide comes from the Greek word to digest. 
since amino acids were first obtained experimentally from partially digested meats. A protein is constructed of a linear arrangement of these amino acids in the form, generally speaking, of a main chain with a number of side chains attached. Amino acids, in turn, are macromolecules made up of the atomic elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Some sulfur atoms get into the act as well. And occasionally phosphorus or trace metals such as copper, zinc, etc. The nature of protein, its function and form, derives from the precise sequence in which amino acids in the chain follow each other. The size of proteins can range from a sequence consisting of just a few to many thousands of amino acids. And since there are some 22 kinds of amino acids, the number of protein words that can be built from this amino acid alphabet reaches truly unimaginable proportions. It is not surprising, therefore, that the degree of diversity found amongst proteins should be so great which is why protein can have so many useful forms. But because amino acids readily combine with each other, in so many ways, they present a problem. In a laboratory concocted soup of amino acids, they combine easily with each other. But the resulting chains do not necessarily form functioning proteins nor is there any predictable order in which amino acids link up in these circumstances. Such randomness would prove disastrous to living organisms. For example, a protein which is responsible for the regulation of glucose must be manufactured with a degree of accuracy that is absolute. This is insulin. The absence or incorrect sequencing of a single amino acid in the chain makes the substance useless. And the human body, deprived of insulin, suffers the well-known disorder, diabetes, which, if untreated, is fatal. What then ensures that amino acids are combined in a manner that suits the uses to which the various proteins are put? Clearly, the individual cell must be able to select from different kinds of amino acids using a control system that can guarantee the synthesis of the right protein for a cell's particular need. What's more, it must be a system that is capable of recognizing and correcting errors in its own operation. And above all, it must be a system able to perpetuate itself so that its capabilities are handed down from generation to generation. It's an extraordinary system. As our understanding of protein synthesis grows, it will become increasingly clear that such a system did evolve and is fundamental to the process of life itself.